Hi guys, so in this video I am going to talk about my project. Uh, I made the source code of this particular project available on GitHub as well in case you want to try it out. It has this nice readme.md which explains how exactly to set this project up and get it up and running. And this project might also be a good addition in your resume. I mean it helped me in some of my interviews. So let's jump into it. So the website which I have built is basically a clone of Have I Been Pond. In case you don't know what Have I Been Pond is, so it allows you to check whether your email, phone number or passwords if they have been breached or compromised or hacked. Okay, and if they appear on dark web or not. So uh, the website which I have built is looks something like this. Okay, and uh, it only allows you to check whether your password has ever been breached or not. It does not has the capability to check uh, the emails and phone numbers. And let's see how it works. So let me enter a random password. Like I have entered the password itself, password word itself here. And if I check, have I been pawned? So it basically list that this password has appeared this many times in compromised data set and if you're using this you should uh, change it immediately and it also highlights the strength of the password which is weak and how you can increase your strength of the password so this count which is coming that this many times it has appeared in compromised password data sets or on the dark web it is coming from the have i been pawned website apis and then it has this breached website section which actually lists all the websites which have been breached and uh, like it also has details about you know the famous adobe breach which happened back in october 2013 where 153 adobe million adobe accounts were breached so let's look at the source code basically how all of this is working so when you clone this repo you will see that the directory structure looks something like this it this repo is basically the source code is based in flask which is a python based web application web development framework okay so this requirement.txt is the files uh, list basically the python modules on which this particular source code is dependent then this config.py list from where to read the config like we need a secret key config which we are reading in production from the secret key environment variable but in dev environment we we are reading the raw key dev and then readme.md basically lists the details to set this project up proc file you can ignore get ignore tells get to ignore to what files should be ignored then this app when you'll go into app directory you will see the templates and static folder templates has all the code for html static has all the static code like css and images i'm not going to jump into these two folders so main code is basically in this main and breaches uh, directory so let's look into the breaches so breaches directory has all the source code which is executed when uh, we when we are basically trying to display this breached website's web page okay so the flask framework has these concepts of routes you can read about it in the documentation but let me explain you briefly routes basically list that whenever you hit any endpoint of your uh, website what particular method should be executed so when i am hitting this slash breached websites if you see here slash breached websites the method which will be executed first will be this so what we are doing here is basically we are trying to get the data which should be displayed on this page from the breached website service and then we are rendering this html page with all the data which should be rendered there okay so if you see here like i'm following the single responsibility principle here that the route only has the code for displaying the web page not the code for you know what data should be displayed so that is there in the service class okay or in the service module so this service directory has the service module so let's look into service so service is doing nothing it is hitting the have i been pawned api endpoint and whatever data it is getting it is returning it in the json format so let's try to hit it in postman and see what data we get so postman in case you don't know this is basically a api creation and uh, analyzer tool i mean it is very widely used in most of the companies like in amazon expedia microsoft tower it is very frequently used so it's a very good tool anyways like if you see here this particular endpoint return this json data so like if we analyze one json it has things like this uh, name the name of the website then title of the website domain name of the website breach date added date modified date font count then it has some description about this breach then it has these uh, data classes that what data were breached like email address ip address and all these things so if you see this particular web page i am displaying all this data from this json only like the first website which i am displaying is triple zero web host and in our response the first was triple zero web host only we are saying that in the data classes email ip and names and passwords were breached so that's what we are showing here that these data was email address ip address name password these date breached accounts all are read from the uh, this api only even the logo path it has the logo path as well the logo which i am displaying here is read from the api only so this is how the breached pa websites part work 
let's now look at the home page how this is working so all the code for that is basically in the main directory okay so again this has this routes forms and service forms has all the code for this form which we are displaying here i'm not going to jump into that let's see the routes so routes has to the code for two route like this slash about is simply displaying the about.html page which is this one okay and let's look at the api endpoint slash okay so when we hit the home page so this code will be executed first so what we are trying to do is we are trying to get the form this font password form and then when we have obtained the form we are checking if you know did we enter this page by pressing submit on this form like uh, when i enter this password here and press font so we are again redirected to this page only so this is what this code is checking that if we are coming to this via form submission then what should we do then we basically take the password data we pass it to our font password service and whatever font count it returns based on the font count we are checking if font count is greater than zero then we should display this error message if it is equal to zero then we should show that show that this was not found in any compromised password data sets and else we there might some also be some error in the pos font password api service so in that case we are displaying that that a service is unavailable right now we are also checking the strength of the password and displaying the guidelines accordingly to you know increase the strength and eventually we are redirecting ourselves to whatever html page we want to display so like one thing here is that let me check some uh, particular password which might not have been found like i have entered some random character so you see here that we are showing that no pawn is found in green and this is the message we are displaying so this if else if else check is basically for that purpose so let's look at the pawn password service how it's working how it's getting this pawn count basically so in the service directory we have the code for that so pawn password service it's doing nothing it is basically hitting this have i been pawned api endpoint and whatever data it is getting it is accordingly uh, displaying that or passing it to the routes module and here is the check password strength like we are checking that if password length is 8 then we sh are displaying message that password length is short similarly we are checking if there is no uppercase character then we are recommending user to add an uppercase characters we have the check for lowercase digits and special characters and all these things so let's see how this api endpoint works I mean, you can read about it in the documentation of this API. I will list it in the description section, but let me briefly explain you. So what this API says is that uh, this API says that you should first generate whatever password you want to check if it has been found or not. You should first generate the SHA-1 hash for it. Okay, so always whenever you are transferring password to some API or you know you are storing them in the database or you are transferring them on a network, you should always transfer the hash. You should never transfer transport the raw password because in case someone is you know intercepting your network so like he will get hold of these raw passwords and it is not even compliant as well i mean you will get sued if you are using raw passwords anywhere in your website anyways have i been pawned api endpoint recommends generate the shavan hash then segregate into two parts head and tail first five characters of this shavan hash are head and the rest of all the characters are basically tail okay so all the characters from here are tail then this api endpoint you pass the argument head to it okay so i'm only passing the first five characters of it so let's pass it here and check what data it is returning so it if you see here it returns this random data okay so i have already copied this data here in sublime text so you see here that it is returning a sequence of characters then colon and then some count okay so it is returning a list of all this so what it is basically returning is that it is returning the tail colon how many times this password has been breached okay or compromised or how many occurrence it has on the dark web so that is what it is returning so if you want to check whether this password has been breached or not you what we are basically doing is that in this list we are trying to find if this tail occurs or not so if you if i had checked this tail so you see here it occurs here and its occurrence is like eighty three thousand times so that's how this uh, font password api works so that's what i am doing in the source code as well that i am basically segregating it in head and tail first five characters head rest of the characters tail i am passing the head to this api endpoint then whatever uh, basically whatever data we are getting it is segregated by colon so i am splitting that and checking if you know the list of hashes if it has just tail then i am returning this count which was after the colon 
which is the pound count basically. So uh, again, you can read about it in the have I been pawned documentation that why this API endpoints works like this, why it only takes the first five characters. Basically, it follows the key anonymity rule, which maintains the anonymity of the password or the user because when we are only transferring the first five characters so there is no way anyone who is intercepting our uh, traffic can you know get hold of the actual hash of the password so to maintain that anonymity to maintain that security we are passing only the first five characters because even if let's say someone got hold of these first five characters he cannot generate the actual uh, password because like there are these many characters which need to be guessed and they can be like any characters like all these are hexadecimal numbers and you can already see like how many uh, you know different tails are there so that's why this way we maintain the security of the password hash which we are passing to the have i been pawned api so this was all i had for this particular project i mean if you liked it you can actually try it out and you know like you can also try to build something on top of it like uh, maybe use some data structure and you know see what are the top and or top k passwords which have been pawned or what are the top k password hashes which are frequently searched on your websites and things like that i mean there are a lot of ideas which can be built on top of it and if you want to basically like we are free to clone my repository and try it out and also if you want to you know contribute to it you can send me a pull request i'll review it and also merge it if i like it anyways uh, thank you guys for watching so please do not forget to like subscribe and comment on this video i'll see you all next time